Call number nine. Okay, first thing we're doing from last time. Remember, this is the AP test. You're working a problem. Uh, you don't get to use a calculator. It's a non-calculator section of the test. So when you see an integral like this, you can't think, oh, pick up my you know, calculator and just type it in. So you just read the symbols. As you're reading this, you should be thinking, this symbol, really use it to mean two things. But in this case, what does it mean? Say it first. Antiderivative. Anti so I'm thinking to myself, I need to find this antiderivative. Uh, anyone have a question to that? Please. Doesn't it also mean like the interval? Yeah, it just depends on the context. So think of it this way, Braden. What I see when I see all of it together is I see integrals. I really do. And then I remember this list. The list is that for the AP test, I must be prepared to find the value of integrals in four different ways. So somebody who likes some tickets, what's the first way? Calculator. 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 Second way we have to find integrals, somebody else, go ahead and sum, uh, read and sum. Very good. Third way we haven't used very much, but we will. We'll use areas to find integrals. Fourth way, let's go for the derivative method. So Braden, you are perfectly on track here. When I see this symbol, I'm thinking integral. But I'm thinking, okay, which of the four ways do I use? Uh, my only choice is the antiderivative method. Okay. Um, good comment. And so that's why I said this symbol in this case, I'm thinking of it meaning antiderivative. So just to kind of help you remember this. Um, so then you remember this list. And if we're finding an antiderivative, we have three choices in this class how we find that integrity. <laughs> substitution. And then the purpose of a use substitution is to use a formula. Take it for Alyssa. So here, to algebra. Algebra followed by a formula. Methods to use here. I think as a class we can answer the first question. Just say yes or no, please. Does this fit a formula? No. 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 Questions? Uh, so I've got to do either use substitution or algebra. I'm going to look here first. It's often a little bit quicker to just check. Um, so write this down on your paper. If I'm going to use a use substitution to find this antiderivative, I've got to first figure out. Um, that I have two functions being multiplied. So someone can, please. <coughs> uh, very good. And the two I can pull out if I want, I can leave this 2x, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I've got square root 1 minus x squared. Okay, once I do that, I have to mentally think to myself, these two functions, in fact, let's let's move the two. The, the constants just kind of get in the way. So I'm going to rewrite this as two multiplied by the integral from zero to one half of just x all over square root uh, one subtract x squared. And then just like Haley said, uh, that gives us two possibilities here. We have x and we have one over the square root of one subtract x squared. And then I'm thinking, adjusting the board here a little bit. So then I'm thinking to myself, uh, let's see, I've got the forms I'm looking at are something to a number, e to the something, one over something, uh, sine or cosine of that something. <coughs> so the first choice fits into this category. This is something to the one, so the something is just x. So one possibility is that u could equal x. Now uh, that's a choice that never helps, so I don't worry about that choice. Questions so far? <coughs> okay. 
So in order to take it to me, what would the other appropriate trucks have? Uh, one minus Nicely done. Take it for hiding. Questions to there? We need to restate it. Awesome. So now what you do is you mentally think to yourself, okay, if I use this as my U, this multiplying function is kind of taken care of. But the derivative of my choice, look where I'm circling, the derivative of my choice has got to be this form. So just answer yes or no, please. If you take the derivative of this, are you going to get basically x? Louder? No. So that's not a good choice. So we don't need to pursue this any further. Does anyone want to see more details to why we don't want to pursue it further? Okay, that means we need to find something else to do. So we go back to the blue, um, and we need a new approach. Uh, can I erase this? Cool, so we'll erase that, that didn't work. Okay, so we gotta do something else. Please. Um, instead of the square on the bottom, maybe a negative one half. Uh, well done. So Bailey's thinking kind of a two-step process here. She says, okay, let's change the formula or the integral. First of all, let's take away the root and write one half power. And then she correctly thinks, hey, let's move that to the top. Now you have this. Take it for Bailey. Questions? Catch up with you. So now we just kind of start our thinking over again. We look and say, okay, what are the two multiplying functions now? So we point out what are the two multiplying then? Uh, x is one then. And then one minus x squared to the negative one half is the other. Let's take it for Landon. So both of these functions fit into the something to a number format. So that allows me to make new choices for you. So what would be the u in terms of this whole function, Sarah? Um, one minus x squared. Uh, close. Uh, remember this, that when you're picking the u, you are, take it for Sarah, you're thinking of these four function, these five function types. So you're thinking of, let's see, something to a number, uh, e to the something, uh, one over something, sine of something, uh, cosine of something. You're looking for one of those types. So, and then your choice of u is just <coughs> something. It's not the extra number. So this is x to the first. So one possibility is that u could equal just x. Here, the choice of u would be what? Just one minus x squared. Questions. So do the test. If I use, oh please. Wait, so it's like if it was e to something, it would only be to something. So does that make sense? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, you identify which form you're looking at first, yeah. and then it's just the something. Okay. Now one just quick exception, take it for chat, is there was a problem in the homework where you had something like this. I don't remember exactly, but in that case, really, the form is this one. Yeah. It's something to a number. So the something in that case ended up being all of this. Yeah. Now, good question. What else? Perfect. So we can erase this. Come back over here. Uh, so we do the test. We say, if this is our choice for you, that's going to take care of this. The derivative of our choice should end up looking almost exactly like this. So please say it out loud. What is the derivative of this going to be? Louder. Negative 2x. If you just kind of set aside the multiplying constant of negative 2, it's a perfect match. So 
that's get, that's telling you proceed with use substitution. It's going to work. Question. Cool. So here we go. Um, so now we do the split screen thing. Back up here. And let's draw a line. So this is going to equal uh, the integral from 0 to 1 half. Uh, we're going to kind of jump in right here. So we have x, and then we have u to the negative 1 half. And then dx. Questions? Oh, thank you. Take it for Ellie. What else? Awesome. Uh, send me to the next step. Go. Right here. I got a question. Oh, please, Len. Is that 2 just from the 2x in the very beginning? Yes, so we find it easier to pull out multiplying constants, so we did. So, good question. Take it. Please, Haley. Um, if right now you're just trying to do the substitution, you have to have zero to one half in here. Oh, great comment. Uh, two tickets for that. Okay, the thing that's new today, the reason why we're going through this example is one, to give you a little more experience with use substitution. But second thing is to introduce you to a new situation where we're actually doing an integral when use substitution is required. So there's going to be something a little different in a second, so I want to keep the limit. Very common. Please, Sydney. So tell me exactly what's right, Sydney. Nice and done, Tinker. Questions? Uh, that means we come over to this column again and we fix the size on this thing. Come over here, we do the derivative of our choice for u. So we say, uh, taking the derivative of both sides to u dx is going to equal negative 2x. And we multiply the x across, so we get du is equal to negative 2x dx. Move the negative 2, we get negative 1 half du equal to x dx. And that's the key thing we need to make the next substitution. Question. Please. Can you write, like, if you're doing an FRQ, would you have to write them all those steps? Or could I just go straight to the u equals negative 2x dx? So I skip sure. that. Great comment. In an FRQ, really, uh, there's not a whole lot you have to write. Uh, what they often will give points or is if you could get to here, uh, actually a little bit further. So we've got the two integral from zero to one half, uh, u to the negative one half, and now we know that we're going to plug in this negative one half du in <coughs> place of the x dx. So if you can get to like there, even if you can do it without writing anything, you're in good shape. This is not the kind of problem where there's really that much required to write. So. There we go. Chad, question? Go ahead. So, how did you know that u over dx is u dx again? Oh, so I have an equation. Yeah. Uh, a legal mathematical step is to uh, take the derivative of the left, that's just d over dx. Yeah. Take the derivative of the right. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so now, move the one half out. So this is going to be two times negative one half is negative one. Zero to one half. Uh, U to the one negative one half. Du. Okay. That's pretty much where we were doing last class period, getting to that point. What's new today is there are limits. So we've got to pay attention to those. Um, we don't have questions so far, though. We need to restate anything. Do it differently. Perfect. Okay. The new idea is the following. We're trying to take this integral up here, boxed in green, 
And we're trying to create a brand new integral that will have exactly the same result. Okay, start with an integral, create a brand new integral that has exactly the same result. Um, <coughs> in fact, just to represent this uh, effectively, I'll pay everyone two tickets who can get the value of this integral on your calculator. So pull out your calculator, do it, give me the decimal value, go. Value will be 1. 
If the x value is one half, a little more work required on this one. The questions to that point. Were, So just say it out loud for me, please. What is one half squared? One fourth. One fourth. So one subtract one fourth is going to be three fourths. Questions? Write that down. You won't want to look later at your notes and wonder where those numbers came from. So you now you have to replace the equivalent limits. So say it out loud, please. When x is equal to zero, u is equal to one. one. So when I write the new integral <laughs> down here, I say, okay, this is going to equal now. Uh, there's still the negative 1 out front. The integral, when u, x was equal to 0, u is now equal to 1. So this is u equal 1. When x is equal to 1 half, u is equal to 3 fourths. And they still have u to the negative one half power of du. If there's something about that that may look uncomfortable, please <coughs> how is that possible? Like, how does it go? It's like backwards because usually we go from like a small number to a bigger number on the limits, but now we're like going backwards. Very good. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't integrate backwards. There's no rule against that. Um, you are correct though, the limit switch, and they did that on purpose. Remember, they're writing a test. They're trying to figure out ways to get people who don't understand confused. Uh, so they do that on purpose to freak people out. Um, but it's just a mathematical equivalency. Okay, It's like saying these two things are equivalent. Um, so even though it looks weird, you just go with it. You say, every, no, I'm serious. Everything I've done is mathematically legal, so I'm safe. It's a good comment. Um, and in this particular case, there's no story or anything, so we don't worry about it. Landon, even if there was a story, you still don't worry about it. At this point, we're just doing mathematical manipulation to accomplish a task. So as long as we don't violate a rule, we're in shit. It's a great question. Two tickets. What else? So box this in purple. Do this one on your calculator, please. Do that integral on your calculator. You can literally type the limit as either 0.75, or you can actually put a fraction as the limit, 3 fourths. The calculator will accept either. So do that one on your calculator. Brain, please. So for when we're putting in our calculator, instead of putting u, do we put 1 minus x squared? Right, the calculator, no, 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 back up, back up, back up. Don't back substitute. You want to do this exact integral on your calculator. Because what we've done is we started with this integral, and we've transformed it to an equivalent <coughs> integral, this exact one. You can't have a mix. Like, you can't have this be x values, and this is du, and this is u. It's just on the calculator, there's no way to, well, actually, you can type the letter u. It'll work. It's not. But it's just. Just don't worry about so it. Just put, X, just put X everywhere. So who has the result here? Show me heads. Let's wait another second. No. Sorry to give you the bad news. But, uh, it felt like it wasn't the end you were feeling right now. Who has it on the calculator? Hands, please. Show me. Who's got it? Who has the result on the calculator? Mikhail, what would you get? Uh, 0.723. Uh, how many got 0.723? So minor mistake there. No worries. I'll take it from Mikhail. Who else has an answer? <laughs> Who else has an answer? <laughs> Sorry. Who else? Um, Ashley, what are you doing? 0.23. Who got that? Who got 0.268? Okay. Show me. Show me. Oh, uh, that's two tickets. Who got the other thing? What did you get, sir? So did you type exactly what's on the screen, except that instead of typing the letter U, you typed the letter X? Yeah. Did you plug in the equation? No, you don't want to plug in the equation. You just want to type U. Yeah.
that's what you type. So what you're mixing up is in, on paper, X has a specific meaning and U has a different meaning. So on paper, is this a value of U or a value of X? View. This is now X. You're mixing things. You can't mix. So this should have just been used still. No, I just, sorry. Whatever I said, I just misled you. So, we're not so this should have been, if you can put an X there, but you can't put 1 minus X squared. So what you're doing now is you're just going to put an X, but you're using the X to directly represent it. It's a matter of, the, uh, it's like X on the paper is different than X on the paper. Last time, 
that if we take an integral from any point to any point of some function, that's going to equal this, which is the same thing as saying this. That's where we're headed, Haley. It's just because we have to do so much work with the u substitution, you kind of lose track of where we're really headed. Um, answer this question, please. I will pay everyone who raises their hand. We talked about it last class period. How does it, small f relate to capital F? Hands, please. You have to keep track of this relationship. How does small f relate to capital F? Lost a bunch of people. Last time we did this, we said if we integrate the velocity. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. You're good. Hold on. We said if we integrate the velocity, this becomes x of t evaluated from a to b, which is the same thing as x of b subtract x of a. So we'll start with this one. Please raise your hand. I'll pay you. How does b relate to x? Come on, hands. That's much better. How does b relate to x? Amanda, in the back, sorry. Oh, because the change in, like, what, like change in b? Uh, close. If we integrate the velocity, we find how much the position changes. That's why we say that this integral is equal to this difference in those positions. Take it for that. Wasn't quite what I was looking for. That's fine. I want to know how v relates to x. Like the simple relationship between v and x. What is it? Jackson. Uh, v is the derivative of x. Perfect. Velocity is the derivative of position. Therefore, Jackson. The position is the blank of velocity. So the position is the, the antiderivative of the velocity. Since velocity is the derivative of a position, position is the antiderivative of the velocity. How many knew that before we said it? Take it. Two for Jackson. Look back up here. <coughs> Somebody, hey, how is capital F therefore related to small f? All we know, come on. Capital F related to small f. Why do you talk to me? So if you're backwards, just make, just make sure it's clear. It's easy to get it back. So f is the derivative of capital F. Capital F is the antiderivative. So once, we're, how many knew that before she said it? Come on, take it to her height. So once we get to here, we are using the fundamental theorem to finish the problem. That's where we're headed. Here. So we need to think antiderivative. The good news is now we can just use a formula because it's just the antiderivative of u to the negative one half. So let's go down a little bit. Okay. So let's see here. So this is going to come, a lot of room on this stuff all over this board. So we've got negative one. Uh, let's take out the u's here. So we've got one to three fourths u to the negative one half du. So we need the antiderivative. Someone raise your hand. Tell me what to write as the antiderivative. Deborah. Um, so as we have one, we're going to use uh, u to one half by half. And because we're doing an integral, we can leave off the plus c. <coughs> you have to remember that instead of the plus c, we've got to keep track of the fact that we need to plug in the limits and subtract. For Deborah. Please, though. So, how the, the integral, how does the one force on the integrator of that, that quite even line? Yes, the line takes the place of the integral. You'll never have them together. Okay. You'll never have those together in the same symbol ever. So only for this class. So. Have the, the right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to, because basically it's that same thing again. You find the integral of that by finding how capital F changes. You find the integral of the velocity by finding how the position changes. So we've got to plug in a B, plug in an A, and that's all. Like this symbol here, Ellie, that symbol means exactly this. Just a different way to write it. Please, Sarah. Um, so now is the are we not thinking of U as one minus X? Great comment, now. two tickets for that. 
when we did an anti-derivative, we would get to this point, mm -hmm. and we would back, mm -hmm. like we get to here, right? Yeah. Then we would back substitute. Yeah. But because we're doing an integral, we're not going to. We're just going to stay with you and forget that we ever had an x. So then when we plug in the, um, the 3 fourths and the 1, the next goes to you. Do you see the difference? It's perfect. Take it. Please. Other sir. Before you change the the only change limits Nice. Yeah, and if we're an anti-derivative, there wouldn't be any limits. So there'd be nothing to change. That's perfect. There'd be nothing to change. Perfect. So we would just go back to x and the problem's done. But because it's an integral, uh, it's easier to change everything to u and forget that there ever was an x. Just stay with you. Great comment. Please, other Sarah. So this is all because we have the integral that we're doing all of this? Mm -hmm. And actually, hey, all of the work here, like all of this, everything to here was exactly the same if it were an antiderivative. The additional steps we are now taking is because it's an integral. Perfect. So all the problems that we did last night with like integrals we probably did wrong? No, no, no. Great question. Hey, another ticket. No, 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 no. No, no. You are you're right on. Listen, listen, listen. I know it sounded kind of funny, but you're right on. What happened was last night there were no integral problems where use substitution was required. So the ones last night, you never had to make the switch from x to u. So you did them just fine. Does that make sense, Sarah? Yeah. Please do. Oh, you're okay. Quiet, please. Quiet. Hey, Haley, and everyone else. Look, come on. Haley, are you comfortable with the fact that using the fundamental theorem, we can, without a calculator, find the value of this integral by finding the antiderivative of the left and then subtracting? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. This symbol is just a way to say that without writing out words. Okay. So the symbol is just, it just has a specific meaning. It literally means to take this, whatever it is, but be into it. Think of this as a subtraction sign written vertically. And then subtract with a plug in. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. What else? Okay, so we're back here. Now I do exactly what I just said to Haley. I'm just going to take this right here, Haley, and I'm going to plug in these two values. Uh, so I've got negative 1, parenthesis. Oh, let's fix this. Say it out loud. You do the 1 half is the same thing as? Square root. Dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So what I really want to do is say 2 square root um, of u from 1 to 3 fourths. The questions they have been superb. Please. Um, so since the subtraction is inside the subtraction, you times it by, or by negative one after. Gotcha. It's really just one, two, three things being multiplied. Okay. So if you chose, you could say negative one times two is negative two, and then you just use negative two throughout. Okay. My advice, it's just, I find it best to just leave it till the end. But it actually could do it either way. I'll show you in a second. I know what you're asking. Know what you're asking. Questions here? Awesome. So we do some work plugging in. So negative 1, 2 square root of 3 fourths, uh, minus 2 square root of 1. So this is what I was saying, Jackson. You can distribute, like you could have just multiplied the negative one times the two, and then this would have been gone. And you would have had negative two, and then this would switch to positive two. Either way, I just think it's safest to leave it to last. So, what else? So now, something you haven't done for a while. Uh, if you have the root of a fraction, two things being divided, you can split it into two separate roots which is to our advantage this time, because the 
square root of 1 is just 1. Because what is the square root of 2? 2. And then this 2 can divide this 2 to make 1. Now you have this result. <coughs> which means if you now distribute, you have this. Uh, somebody type that on their calculator. Negative root 3 plus 2. What do you get, David? 0.268, which is what we expect. That's what we found the integral to be. The way to do it without your calculators. Cool. Question. Uh -huh. Wow, that's good. That's all. Let's give it out. Wait, so all of our questions are like that? That's a lot of work. Um, uh, for pretty much every uh, engineering was harder than math. It was. It's what? I said engineering classes were on average harder than the math classes. But on, I can tell you that when I took math classes, so the only, I started with Cal one at BYU with this box. Um, they didn't have it in my high school. Um, so every math class I took. Every, pretty much every engineering class I took, every programming class that I took, uh, every physics class that I took, because I same thing, I started with basically AP physics, so. Um, I had to plan a schedule where I knew that I would be allowing for kind of three to four hours of work on my own outside of the one hour of class. Ew. Yeah, that was required to get it in. Per class or just? Per class. Yeah. So because of that, uh, it was very common for electrical engineering students to take more than eight semesters to graduate. Yeah. Um, I graduated in ten, which was faster than the average. So it's yeah, just, boy. It's not, it's not bad at all. I was very fortunate; I didn't have to work. So, wait, you mixed it up. Were you on scholarship? Yes. No, you're right, man. It's a bit of work, but it's it really is. It's like college. Yeah. It's much like college. So. Engineering, what was different in engineering is you would get uh, a problem where like in math it's kinda of like this class where they give you 10, 15 problems or something. You go to work on them. In engineering they give you like three. <laughs> But it still takes just as long. Because <laughs> you have to work out, like, what the heck do they want? There's what are they so talking so about? So many things yeah. that you have to find in the four equations. And making sense of it. Yeah. yeah. But that's good. That's why engineers get paid more than anybody else when they graduate. That's why they're in high demand. It's tough to find them. My son's majoring in computer science right now. He's in his fourth semester, um, and this year, this semester, he just kind of lucked out and doesn't have a lot of programming classes. He's like, oh my gosh, I have so much time, because he doesn't have to spend so long creating programs. Yeah. Yeah. Just that's how it, this is what it takes. Your job isn't going to be that much different. If you want to have a good job, it's going to take work. So. Well, please, Jen. I'm just lost. I don't know where I got lost. I'm just lost. <laughs> so hey. You're not the only one. Chance. Hey, look up. Hey, so everyone look up then. Look, look, look. The appropriate response, hey, look. The appropriate response when you are lost is to do exactly what Chance just did. You just say you're lost and then we talk about it. Uh, the inappropriate response is to check out <laughs> and say, I give up. That's not an appropriate response. Good job, Chance. Look up. Hey, look at me. So it really helps if you think of the big steps first. And then within each big step, there are small steps. Okay. So the big step is this. Hey, no one talk to us. No one talk. You start with the need to find the value of an integral. Uh, we did it on our calculator just to give you a little bit of confidence that what we're doing really does work. 
So we need to find this integral. Okay? My first thought was how? Well, it's the non-calculator portion of the test, so there's only one option. Without a calculator. The anti-derivative method. So my next thought is right here, Chance. Hey, everybody, I'm thinking this. Which of these three methods is going to let me find the anti-derivative of what I've circled? Are you with me to there? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, we saw that a formula doesn't work. So we started to try U substitution. Uh, so at that point, you kind of have to switch your mindset. It, it really is a great example of a complex, closer to real life problem. Where you say, okay, I no longer can think of an integral for a second. I'm just going to think anti-derivatives. So my brain switches into, like Sarah said, like the homework of last night, which is how do I do U substitution? So temporarily I'm forgetting about the integral, I'm just doing U substitution. So I think, okay, what happens? Two functions being multiplied. I pick my values of u. I notice that the derivative of this is negative 2x. That matches this other multiplying function, so I know I'm good. So I do the steps to do the u substitution. I take the derivative of both sides. Very good to that. Okay, then what I did, okay, let's pause for a second. I'm talking directly to Chance, but I'm really talking to everyone. Anyone need me to clarify, restate, anything that has happened so far? This question is really good. Like keeping track of the big picture really helps. Thanks, Chuck. Is there ever going to be one where you could do U substitution for algebra or what? I don't remember anything like that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean they couldn't create one, but I don't recall any problems where that's the case. Good question. Ticket. Hey. So chance. All of this is just U substitution. Uh, when I got to here, right here. I've pretty much done what I've always done with the U substitution. Okay, now we've got to switch our mindset a little bit. We have to remember that all the work was done in order to find this integral. So we have a new little thing to worry about, the limits. Okay. So in orange, we are transforming the limits. We get this new problem in purple here. Are you good to there? Okay. You're doing great. So I just don't quite understand why you suddenly you, I understand that if you do X it reverses like change it back to X it reverses the whole process. But I just don't can't wrap my head around why like switch it to you. Like what oh, gotcha. purpose does that serve? You're good. The whole purpose of switching to you was there is no way to find the antiderivative unless we can use a formula. And so way up here, our goal was to find this antiderivative. Now I can show you, we won't do it because it's not going to help on the AP test. I can grab a book, a textbook, and I can look up the formula for this. And we could have skipped all these steps. But you don't get the book on the test. <laughs> so you've got to get to a place where you can use a formula. Okay? Now another reason why I will tend to feel confusing is because of what Landon said. The steps are just very mathematical, meaning you kind of don't assign a whole lot of meaning to the steps. You just make sure that the manipulation is legal. And you end up with a brand new problem, and you don't worry about where it came from. You literally say, at this point, I'm starting from the very beginning, essentially pretending that none of this happened. And it's like, oh, this isn't too bad now. They gave me a problem that's really not too difficult. But getting to that point was a bit of work. It is. But you get to there. Yeah, so you pretty much just become a new variable. Yeah, just a new variable. Okay. Yeah, just a new variable. It could be W or whatever. Yeah. So, um, But we transformed it because it helps us work from this point forward. Okay. Okay, I want eyes on me again. This idea of transforming is new to you. Like, I don't think we've, you've done this typically in any other class up to this point. But just for those who go on through engineering and such, it's going to keep happening. Like it's a very useful tool that mathematicians have figured out. That you do a certain type of transform and suddenly a lot of work is easier. Uh, we spent two full college semesters at BYU studying what's called a Laplace transform. You don't need to worry about the details, but it's basically the same idea. You do this transform, there's another one you do, a, it's called a Fourier transform. So it's not, a, it's, going to be, it's going to keep showing up if you go into engineering. Um, are you good to hear? Yeah. Good. Anyone else need help to hear? Please, Chuck. Um, 
It's kind of back a little bit. I just thought of it though. Um, so for the u, we figured out that it's equal to one minus x squared. Why does it need to? Why do we need to know that the derivative is equal to one x? Oh, only because in the process of doing the u substitution steps, yeah. if I take this derivative yeah. and find that the derivative of my choice of u is essentially the other multiplying function, it just confirms to me that all the work's going to work. Okay. That's all. Just a test. Okay. That's very good. Take it. Please, Ben. Uh, yes, very good. On uh, last night's homework, we would get to here, but there were no limits. So then we basically would just say, find the outside derivative, and then just plug back in this. It's perfect. The only thing that's new today is the limits. Please, Ben. Nice, perfect, perfect. Two for Maddie and two for Bailey. The whole reason we change the limits is so, look, the whole reason we change the limits is because we just don't want to have to worry about going back. And we don't need to. When we're doing an integral, there's no reason to go back to x. So we just proceed. Yes, absolutely. And it really isn't, hey, everyone, look, look, look. Let me take it for Bailey. If you change back to 1 minus x squared and leave the limits alone, like you find the antiderivative first and then change back, okay, I've done it both ways. It is exactly the same number of steps. Uh, complexity of math, exactly the same. Uh, why do I have you change them? It's because I have a lot of experience with the AP test. So this is a big advantage to all of you. Um, they have specific questions on the AP test regularly where they test to see if you understand that the limits can be changed. And so if I teach you the other method, you will never get that question right. If I teach you this method, you get all the questions that are the right. So it's just a better way to teach you. Anybody else? Perfect. Okay, so we're down here now. Chance, you good? Yeah. So at the purple, it's like starting over. And you say, if I need to do an integral, the first thing is antiderivative. But hey, nice thing now, I don't have to do anything but a formula. So I simply found the antiderivative, it's right here. So now I know this. So here's a formula in red, and this formula in green, or this one, they're the same thing. <coughs> so the green is the antiderivative of the red. Once I have the antiderivatives, I do what I talked to Haley about. You plug in one limit into the antiderivative, plug a limit into the other, into the antiderivative, subtract them. That's the other way of finding the value of the integral. Perfect. You get it there? From there, it was arithmetic. So. Okay. Good question. So, keep going. The second green circle thing, I, my formula that I got said was negative two square root of u. Line one. No worries, it's because you just applied the negative one already. Okay. But I'm just going to wait until the end. Either way is fine. Please, please. Um, were you writing this on like a thing that was reported at this point? Would you write it like that? Would you take the, would you leave it like this to tell you answer with all the equals? And then, does that would work? Or would you rewrite it like the original integral and then say equals? Oh, gotcha. Um, <coughs> I think I can summarize your question in a concise way. Everyone look up. I don't want to miss this comment. Okay? Look up. Ready to look up for a second. Uh, on an FRQ that involves this kind of a process, uh, the rule is really simple. There's not really anything that is required to be written. You just write what is necessary to make sure you don't make mistakes. So you don't have to really stress about, am I writing the correct things or not? It doesn't matter. Just write enough that you don't make a mistake. Um, it's not highly likely because it would be very difficult. But if a student could go from here to the purple without writing anything, it's fine. They won't they, they won't dock you any points. So I didn't say that was easy. <laughs> like I'm not going to do that. But there are people out there that's unbelievable how much they can do in their heads. So. But the rule is you write what you need to write. Just make sure you maintain a quality. Don't write. Garbage, right? The sequence this, you know, make it organized. So, okay.
questions in here? Oh, please. Oh, great comment. No, it's a pretty involved question. Um, here's how the probably give points. I'm going a little bit off of this again. I don't have a scoring guy in front of me. Hey, if this were an FRQ, you probably will give one point for getting to here. Like they'll look through your work and see, do you show evidence that you properly got to this point? Uh, they might get a second point for correctly finding the two root U, and then the last point for actually finding the result. So no, it's a pretty involved FRQ. Uh, in fact, it's not common to have FRQs that involved. This is typically more of a multiple choice question. Well, please, Ellie. So we had a question on like our homework that was silver gap, but it didn't have to use a substitution. Oh, right. So in that case, you just find the end figure. Right, and then find the limit. Yeah, think of it this way, Ellie. The problem with the homework was really just starting here, where there was no use substitution involved at all. It was just a matter of using the correct formula or maybe a little algebra first, and then just plugging the limit. So this one's in just the you. Correct. Which does complicate it. Like anytime I see an integral, where I have to use substitution first, I kind of draw and say, oh. Well, we just have any Last night you did not, that. no. Hey, yeah, listen. No problems last night that involved an integral with use substitution. There were problems where you had to do integrals, so you had to find the antiderivative using formulas, but not use substitution. So it's really not that much different than last night. Just one added step. We're just combining, the, as always, it's like all the other units. We kind of learn a little here, a little here, and then we have to kind of start putting them together. Next example. Look at this one, please. Let's do one more just to solidify what we're doing. So now we're going to work on part number eight. seems like the right choice. So that means we've got to have two functions multiplied. Somebody help me, okay? Go ahead. Nicely done. Someone else, take it for Heidi. Uh, if this is our choice for one multiplying function, uh, what would the choice of u be for this multiplying function? Ellie? Oh, no worries. Sorry. Did you just ask what's one? Very good, they kind of hit in it. Like it's not as obvious, but this is really something to the one. So our choice of u is the something, take it for Soren, so that's why it's x plus one. The other choice, someone else, go. X squared plus two x. Nicely done. Because the other function is e to the something, so we've got the x squared plus two x, perfect, sir. Anyone else? Nice. So now we do the little test like we talked to Chad about. We say, if this is our choice for u, we're going to take care of this multiplying function. But class as a whole, answer it. Is the derivative of this going to look like this, yes or no? No. no. So bad choice. So we try the other way. Is the derivative of this u going to look like this multiplying function, yes or no? Yes. yes. That's a better answer. That's good. There's a little hesitancy there. What is the derivative of this say? 2x plus 2. Again, remember, multiplying constants you can get out of the way. Yeah, I think we, let's do some steps here. So we go like this. Um, 
take this one, u equals x squared plus 2x. We differentiate both sides. Factor out the 2. It worked perfectly. Okay, this is a good time to ask about any part of that that just is fuzzy. So. Cool. So time to draw a line and do the other half. Right, so let's make this a little bit more here. So we finish this, multiply the dx across. So we get du is equal to 2x plus 1 dx. Move the 1 half over here. Questions to the and you don't have to have a question, just want me to restate, that's fine as well. Please, Ellie. So right underneath your you sign it what you So this is going to equal, we go from 0, 1, of x plus 1, and then e to the u, uh, dx. So we're going to take it tell me what to do on the next slide, please. Okay. Um, is equal to one half du, we just plug that in. Nicely set of ticket. Pull out the one half. <clears throat> and as Ellie very nicely explained, that's kind of where we got to last night when we were doing a u substitution. Uh, we didn't have any limits, so we just take the antiderivative back substitute. Uh, the new thing today is to change the limits. So somebody talk about that. Go read. So for the value of the limit zero and one, we plug that into the u substitution equation. So I'm gonna write this down one second. You're great. So it's we'll go up or lower, it doesn't really matter the order. So go one squared to get for Braden. So what's that gonna equal Braden? Do it for me. Two. Alright. Three. Plug mm -hmm. in the other one. Uh, just a comment again, like you know, this question about what you need to write. If you can do what I'm doing in purple in your head, that's fine. You don't have to write it down. I'm writing it so no one loses track, but you can do it in your head. So. Question? Awesome. Uh, we get a brand new integral in blue. Somebody tell me what is the brand new integral in blue, by then? One half integral three top limit three bottom limit. Okay, that's, as I talked to Chance, that's really my intermediate goal, is to get to a really simple integral problem. That's the whole reason we did the u-substitution. So we can start fresh right here, brand new problem, much easier to solve. We know the answer to this integral will match exactly the answer to the more complicated integral. It's perfect. Questions? So we just go from there. We'll just come over here now. Somebody tell me what's right. Hey, please. Um, so you're just kind of <coughs> typically is best left out and done at the end. So we're going to write it like this. Use the third. So 
subtract e to the zero. Okay, you all have memorized that e to the zero is the same as one. You should be able to find it's not plus minus. You should be able to find your uh, this answer amongst the multiple choice possibilities. Question. Uh, because we can put a plus C here, when we plug in the 3, we have plus C minus, and then the C would just subtract the The previous line. Yep. Uh, as I said all year, showing the greater that you understand what's equal to what really does help ensure you're going to get all the points. <laughs> Other questions on this one? Please. Basically, basically, the result of this, just like we did on the calculator on the last one, the result of this integral will be exactly the same as the result of this integral. And that result is uh, no. Yep. Like if you type this, like you type this on your calculator, you type this on your calculator, you type this on your calculator, it's all the same. Just for now, you don't get to do that on the test. Okay, another thing, we've got six more minutes, I want to show you. We won't do another one like this, but I want to get you started on another homework problem. So, hold on. Look at this one, please. Write it down. Okay, write that down. Okay, I'm going to warn you up front just because we only have five minutes. Use substitution isn't going to work. But we need to go through the thought <coughs> process of verifying why so that when you're on your own, you can verify when it won't work. So there are two functions being multiplied. Somebody identify those two functions. Excellent. One over x plus one over x squared. Nicely done. So if those are the two functions being multiplied, uh, we're trying to think of these types of functions, along with the sine and cosine, which I won't write just to save time. Uh, somebody help me. It's not too difficult. You know, which type does this fit into? Which type does this fit into? Knowing that allows you to pick an appropriate value for you. So what would be the appropriate choice for you in this first multiplying functions case, Brady? X plus one. X plus one. Does anyone need additional explanation on that? Somebody else tell me what's the choice of you in the other case? Tougher. It's what Vanek is doing. This is really something to a number. Something to the first. So Annika, what's the something? Nicely done. Take that. Questions for anyone? Do the test. Take one of your choices of u and find the derivative. Say it out loud. What's this derivative? Two x. Two x. Two x. Okay, is that gonna? Is there any way to like factor that and end up with this? No. No, that doesn't work. So that's a failed choice. So we try the other way. If this is your choice for u, say it out loud. What's the derivative? What's the derivative? One, that doesn't match the other multiplying function. That's a strong indicator that u substitution won't work. Questions? So that means you've got to use some algebra to get this to work. So let's scroll down a little bit. Somebody will see it. So what algebra can be done to this equation to perhaps make it different? Yeah, please. Done. Take it for Deborah. Holy. Okay, pause for questions. So these divide out. Now, Braden, help me with something here, real quick. 
we have to be cautious when we divide variables. Uh, there is a value for x for which if we plug in that x, this doesn't equal 1. Instead, it equals undefined. What value is that, Braden? Negative 1. Negative 1. Uh, somebody help Braden take it on that. Why am I not concerned with the fact that if you plug in a negative 1, this is undefined? Our limits are just 1 and 2. Nice. We're doing the integral in somewhere else. We don't care about that little hole over there that occurred. Question? Perfect. So now you have this. It's back to Chance's comment. You really have still an integral problem, but it's a much simpler integral to be solved. It's more like the homework last time. No u substitution. Um, no need to change the limits. Just look at this and say, hey, I've got two things being added. To find the antiderivative, <coughs> I just find the antiderivative of each one separately. We'll say it out loud. What is the antiderivative of x? x squared over 2. Say it louder, man. x squared over 2. x squared over 2. Minus what is the antiderivative of x? Sorry, x, of 1, my bad. X. Who said that? Take it for Sydney. Now we've got to evaluate the limits. And I'll let you finish that on the homework, but any <coughs> question here? Please go. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, no worries. So are you comfortable, Kelsey, that the green is the derivative of the red? Yeah. Good. So don't look here for a second, but what's the derivative of that? Don't worry. So the antiderivative of one is x. This is normal. Good work. I'll text out the problems that we put the pink. So what's